Yep. Hi everybody, my name is Kevin Cole. Thanks for being here today. Um, today I'm going to give me, be giving you a brief period of instruction on building relationships, specifically between the TOSER, the teacher on special assignment, and the teachers. Um, in some other locations, the TOSA is also called the instructional coach. Um, I'll be using the term TOSA, that's what we use here in the school district. And so our presentation focus one more time is about the building and establishing relationships between the TOSA and the teachers. Anyways, today I'm going to be covering uh, three significant aspects of building these relationships. And the first one is the importance of building relationships between the TOSA and their teachers. So anyways, the, the, the first thing here is establishing trusting relationships is, is really important for the teacher on special assignment. Um, in order to effectively teach the adult students, the teachers, um, the TOSA needs to have effective communication and a level of rapport with every teacher and administrator. This is often challenging because a lot of times the TOSA is stepping into a classroom with a teacher who's been teaching for many years. And so this can be a challenging topic. Um, in order to be effective, the TOSA needs to develop that relationship with both the teaching staff and with the administration as well. According to Spalding, our relationships are essential to effective collaboration, and multiple studies have found that teacher collaboration has positive outcomes on both the teachers and the students. Um, so it's really important to have effective collaboration. In order to do that, you have to have effective communication and good relationships. So this collaboration process includes a team that contains teachers, it contains, it contains TOSAs, it contains supporting staff and administration as well. And this type of relationship building can be accomplished in a variety of ways, which is our second um, topic. Does anybody have any questions about the importance of building relationships? Yeah. No? Yeah? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, could you go into some effective ways building the relationships? Perfect. Please? That's actually our next topic. Oh. So ways we can okay. approach in or approaches to building these relationships. So these are different approaches or ways uh, in which the TOSA can establish those relationships. So there's many, many different ways um, adults can establish relationships with each other. Um, in a professional working environment, the TOSA can do this by a variety of means. Um, there are many different approaches, uh, but certainly one of them is frequent, effective, one-to-one -one communication. Um, so like I had mentioned a moment ago, that, that idea of communicating frequently and effectively, one-to-one -one communication, communication, and done so frequently by a variety of avenues. Um, not necessarily just an email every once in a while, but emails, voicemails, phone calls, face-to-face um, -face interaction is, is certainly a preferred method of communication. Um, teachers really appreciate talking with and receiving assistance from their TOSA, um, and this is important to include a face-to-face -face discussion because that can eliminate miscommunications that might come up in email or voicemail. Um, another way TOSAs can build positive relationships is to provide quality, relevant, professional development opportunities for teachers. So teachers oftentimes will be involved in professional development, but if it's not relevant, they kind of tune out right away, just like students do in our classes. Um, teachers can tune out too, so it has to be a relevant professional development opportunity. Uh, these are typically district or site level opportunities, usually hosted by a TOSA and any instructional leadership. In one study um, that Killian did in 2015, 84% of teachers reported being part of a collaborative team, and 90% of those teachers reported that teacher collaboration was helpful not only for themselves, but for their students as well. So collaboration is really important, and professional development is a significant key in that. So again, many, many methods here to building relationships. Um, just kind of talked about a couple. Does anybody have any questions at this point? I know I'm going kind of fast. No, but you're hitting on the collaboration and the the uh, time spent in the face-to-face -face contact, and yeah, that's, right. we needed that little reminder, thank you. Excellent. Okay, the third topic I wanna cover just briefly before we conclude is communicating effective feedback. That is that communication that is effective. Uh, I really love this cartoon right here. You have a little dog in school and he gets his paper back from the teacher and it says, bad dog. What's that really, teaching the dog? He says, I'm gonna need more specific feedback on my formative assessments, and that's absolutely true. One of the big uh, things with effective feedback is being specific. So frequent, specific, and various feedback. Uh, communication is necessary in the workforce, but communication can also be harmful if it's not effective feedback. And so that's what we're looking for when we have feedback from the TOSA to the teachers. Um, opening as many lanes as communication as possible to make communication timely, reliable, frequent, 
is one such way of giving effective feedback. Toasters should be communicating with teachers via several modes, such as voicemail, email, face-to-face -face visitations, and Toasters must provide feedback that is timely. It doesn't do a teacher very much good for someone to do a, a, a classroom visit and do an observation and not give them feedback for four or five weeks. Um, that feedback should be timely. It should come that day or the following day. Um, a second method of communicating effective feedback is giving feedback that is various, specific, and constructive. Feedback must be cons uh, specific, including examples, to ensure that reinforcement of good teaching practices. It is important to note that constructive feedback should also not be too specific because then an error may be corrected specifically rather than correcting the problems. Uh, committing uh, to timely and constructive feedback allows the TOSA and the teacher to explore potential solutions in problem areas. So that's why it's essential to have timely, um, constructive feedback. All right, I went through this really quickly. I gave you a brief introduction. I talked about the importance of building relationships with um, those teachers. I talked about approaches to building those relationships, and I also talked, to, talked about communicating effective feedback. Um, I have several sources that I use to get to this point, and those are there. Does anybody have any questions on anything I covered? I know I burned through it kind of quickly, um, but this is just a short introduction to these topics. Good reminder. Great. Because this is what we do with our students. Perfect. And so it's a good opportunity to, to refresh. So thank you very much. Great. Anybody else have anything? All right. Great, you guys. Thank you very much for being here. If you have nothing else, I have nothing else. Have a great day. Thank you. Cool. I think that's fine. I'm sorry. I talked a little much. You're fine. But you, no, you're fine. You just you led me right into it. No, it's it good. Just... You were supposed to. It was supposed to be kind of interactive. That's actually well, perfect. And that's. I can't not interact. No, that's great. I think that's great, Shirley. Let me just make sure it recorded all that. Oh, shoot. Yep, it's still recording. Nope, perfect. <laughs>